We saved this $500 Porsche Boxer from a dismal life in the junkyard. And now, we're giving it new life as a vintage-inspired supercar. This is Project Jigsaw. So we made a rear subframe. We braced it in the front. We braced it all everywhere else. We have not braced it across the back yet. So like this. The support here for the toe arm comes down. It's a pretty long piece with yeah. no support. Yeah, so we need to fabricate support for that. Say that again. <laughs> so we need to fabricate support for that. Some people like my dry deadpan style. Maybe not in the first minute of the video though. That's true, maybe we should get them to like us before they get to know us. That's usually the way things work, <laughs> I think. <laughs> so from factory, Porsche had this aluminum plate that kind of spanned across between all the subframe components to tie them together. Um, not only did it add bracing, but it also added cooling for the transmission. You'll notice in the front here, these rubber flaps that are a little deformed, they're supposed to be more like scoops. Um, they would kick the air up to the transmission to cool the diff and everything else. So what we need to do is come up with our own that will bolt to our new subframes that we made from scratch, bolt to this uh, tube across the front, and in theory we should be able to replicate this in our own style. So before we drive this thing though, we have to make sure this is all braced, otherwise we're going to lose all of our precise measurements and everything else that we have done to make sure this thing works. Yeah, this engine is way more torque than the factory engine for the Boxer. So I'm 3D scanning the underside of the car for this because so that we can actually take some time and come up with a couple different designs so we can tweak it. Because if I did cardboard right here, it's gonna be a pain in the nuts. Just kind of lay down here and it's like cut cardboard, lay it up, cut cardboard, push it back up again. We have the technology, might as well use it, right? <laughs> we have to get that all those processes. Look at that, I got all the data I need, I believe. We got the uh, shifter right here, that like counterweight. The diff here is the lowest, which I also need to work around if I need the scan, as well as I also have these plates right here, which are we're gonna mount the plate I'm gonna make. We're also gonna mount on the tube right here. I think we got all the data we need. So Tony, while I'm playing on the computer, what are you up to? I'm gonna bleed out these brakes and the clutch system so that we can shift gears and stop. That's that's good. Do you like how I'm pouring and looking away at the same time? Honestly, I think it's a skill that more people need to uh, harness. Yeah, yep. I don't know, I can look at my phone and walk wherever I want without walking into things, so it's kind of the same thing, right? Well, yeah, but we're not in a shortage of that. I feel like there's a lot of people that can do that. <laughs> Here, Tony, clean yourself up. The comment section says that your nail is not video friendly. We need to make this appropriate for younger audiences. It's the Pac-Man vulnerable ghost. You know, that's perfect because it is pretty vulnerable right now. He feels very vulnerable right now. <laughs> <laughs> So if you don't have one of these, they are a game changer. It's a pressure bleeder. So you fill the brake system under pressure, all, all the fluids going in under pressure. And it's great when the system's been opened up a lot. You've got a lot of air in there, um, especially with clutches, because they're a royal pain to bleed. And you only need one guy to do it. You don't need somebody pumping the pedal. Can you do it? Can I do hey, it? tell me a story while you're pouring that. Yeah, so and I'll then, tell and you about. Look at me, why are you pouring? The other nice thing, that this is a really small opening to do that with. <laughs> but uh, ABS, when you're dealing with ABS systems, 
This is also, this, this is a must have. Some of them require this for bleeding them. Tony, your lines are dripping because you didn't torque them down yet, remember? Yeah. Looks good now. I'll be the judge of that. Yeah, it looks good now. It's one of those things you'll have in these bigger jobs. Yep. Check your work here, Tony. Wow, the brakes actually build pressure. Nice. Ooh, that's feeling pretty good, Tony. Good job. One step closer. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. So here's what I've come up with so far. You can see how nice this would be a 3D scan and model in a 3D plane and be able to mock up around these parts. Like at the bottom of the diff here where it protrudes through this little peg right here. Even the edge of the bar up here where I can then go through and add holes and have the plate made up exactly where I want to go. It just saves a lot of time. This is why I think that it's really important that you learn this technology. It's 2024 now. This technology is relatively affordable. This scanner's less than $1,000. Fusion 360 is free for home use. You can get a 3D printer for less than a couple hundred bucks that can get you started anyway for mock-up. And then obviously like a CNC plasma table like I'm going to use now is a little more expensive and a bit up there. However, like being able to even just design in a 3D space on the computer will save you time in the long run and will increase your productivity and also your quality. This is not an ad for this, by the way. I just really like this workflow, and I've been doing it for a while now, and I found that this is the way to go. Now, this might be hard to see here, but if I go to the sketch, I can kind of highlight up here this little lofted edge here. So this edge right here, I offset another line. This is gonna get rolled over and flanged over to add strength and rigidity to this plate. I'm also gonna do the same thing along this inside hole, I think. It's gonna be a little complicated to do that, but I think that'll add a good bit of rigidity. We'll see what I do in the long run when I actually get down to the shop. Back in here in these spaces, right behind the bell housing, because this is towards the rear of the car, I want to add NACA ducts. So what I'm doing here is I'm going online and I'm looking for NACA duct files. And on Thingiverse, someone uploaded these NACA duct files that are for flat-sided bottoms of cars. So I'm going to download and print those. All right, so I imported those NACA ducks I found online. I'm gonna put a link in the description down below so you guys know where I got them from. Um, I imported them, I modeled around them, and I uh, cut them out. So now, they're located on the plate and ready to be CNC cut. Time savings. So I have one sheet of 16 gauge that this will fit on. So it means we got one shot to cut this out. I think my settings are right. We're gonna find out really soon. The cut came out amazing, but I forgot something. When I added the extra 15 millimeters to the back edge to roll it over, I forgot to add that to the final extrusion before I plasma cut it. However, I don't think it'll be a problem because right here is where it's supposed to be extended 15 millimeters. If I still roll back 15 millimeters and you know tip it upwards, it won't get in the way of my bolt. 
There's still room for it here. They still get the rigidity it needs. I think it's okay. I am a little frustrated I forgot to do that. But all in all, this cut came out really clean. So let's get it off the table here, fit it up to the car and see if it actually works before I do any shaping to it. Tony, I see that your vulnerable ghost is now uh, a little He's bit better. He's looking a little better, yeah. Yeah, I touched him up with the uh, white paint marker and instead mm. of white out. <laughs> That's a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little more permanent. He was taking a beating. The fuel pressure regulator that we installed is designed to be used with the factory fuel injection pump that will knock the pressure down to something that the carburetor can use. What I didn't realize when I was reading the literature on it, it needs an 8AN return line in order to make that happen. That's a half inch diameter return line, way larger than what's on the car, and it would be a royal pain in the butt to try and plumb that in because of the way the return line goes through the factory fuel level sender and pump. Holly sent us a regulator that will work with the factory lines and another added bonus, since we don't know whether we're using fuel injection or carburetor in the long term, this regulator will work with either one if we just swap out this spring that they sent with it. So we zip tied this fuel pressure regulator in place. It's not because we do janky work. It's because we had to take the last fuel pressure regulator out and if we had made a bracket for that, it would have been a big waste of time. So you can't rush temporary. Mm -mm. Help when you have hands and knees. All right, both NACA ducks are finished as well. We'll see if they fit. I printed these with a one millimeter nozzle, so they're rough, and I print them kind of fast too, as you can see. They do fit though, however. First try. Needs a little bit of sanding to fit a little bit better, but again, it's a really rough print, so that's not surprising at all. Of ducks and everything. Quack. That's it, buddy. Yeah, man. Yeah. That now looks I got a pro professional and everything. Ooh, I know, right? Now we just got to uh, get some shape, get the knack of ducks fit a little bit better. I don't even have room for material. So up next, I need to flange these edges here. I'm gonna round them over rather than doing a sharp edge. This is where it gets a little tricky though because these are a lot of flowing curves and these edges are going to fight me. Like these curves right here, this inner curve here is gonna to need to be stretched because the material is gonna to have to go somewhere when it's curved over whereas the outside one like this one's gonna to need to be shrunk. And that's where this gets a little complicated. I don't bead roll a lot. We have a nice bead roll in the shop, so I really can't complain or have many excuses, but this is gonna be a challenging piece and hopefully I get my pre-stretch and pre-shrink correct or it's gonna become a big mess. I'm gonna start by working this inner frame first, get that dialed in and flat after I get it all curved and then we'll move to the outside.
This part of the process always makes me nervous because now my perfectly crisp flat panel is no longer crisp and flat. It looks like a mistake. So hopefully when I put it in the bead roller, I can get it to go flat again. If not, some tweaking will be necessary, which I think honestly, it's gonna be impossible to not have some kind of tweaking at the end. It didn't come out too bad. Let's see if I can clean up now with a mallet and uh, this wooden table here, kind of flatten it out. Um, but all in all, I'm pretty impressed with how that came out on the first try here. So now that it lays flat, I have the tougher part done. Now let's go to the outside edge here and uh, we'll have a plate. So now that the panel's made, what I want to do next is get these NACA ducts to fit. Um, like I said, these are very roughly made. It's just for mock-up for now. It's also in PLA Meta, which is not, you know, going to hold up to heat in the long run. But what I need to do now is I need to put holes in these because this model actually didn't have holes in it for some reason. So I'm going to drill some holes in them, get them mounted on the plate here. So these three holes on both sides mount to the subframe, right? And then these three holes on both sides mount to that tube that's like transverse across the engine bay there. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a strip of metal here that lays across here. I'm gonna put holes in it that match up to these holes, put nuts on the back side of it, so then I could then bolt that plate to this plate. Then I'll put it up in the car, tack the plates onto that tube, then everything's aligned. And the best part about doing CAD is I have to do no measuring. I can just go in here and uh, make a strip quick. I already have the holes located right here.
got the new fuel pressure regulator on, but the pressure still won't go where we want it to. So I disconnected the return line to see if maybe we've got a restriction there that is not allowing the fuel pressure regulator to be able to bleed off enough pressure. I'm gonna turn on the fuel pump and see what happens with that. Yeah, that looks like about six, seven pounds, which is exactly where we want this. So there must be some kind of restriction going back to the tank. I don't know if there's something in the line or if there's something in the tank related to the fuel pump that was built into that that's causing the restriction. So we're gonna remove the battery, disconnect the fuel line, blow it out, and see if we find anything. If not, we're going back into the tank. Yep, it's blowing out down here. But that wasn't the problem. We blew the fuel line out with air. It seems to be free flowing. So either we blew something out or we didn't. We're gonna hook it back up. If it's still not working, we gotta go back in the tank. I feel like I've done this before. The pressure was too high. Okay, so you're thinking it's mechanical in the fuel tank then? Yeah, I think something in the return line at the pump, there might be a valve or something there that's keeping this from happening. So I think if we disconnect the line from the pump, then it can just dump back into the tank and we'll be okay. It's getting your workout. Yep. So we disconnect this. I don't know how much noise that would make if it just dumps into the drops into the fuel tank. But. It doesn't sound like it's a sump of some sort. Like a waterfall? Yeah. It's a water feature. We're installing a water feature. All right, Ryan, are you ready for this? Oh, I was born ready. All right. What's it say? What's it say? It's still too high. Yeah, it's dumping in the intake now. Ah! You think the line's too small? I don't know. There was nothing on this one about that line size so I, I mean it's a possibility so it looks like with everything that we've done i think the line the return line is probably too small for what this regulator is able to use also um, i can't get an exact spec on that um, a little experimentation will probably tell us that and then we got to figure out what we do about it mm. yeah more hurdles Actually, it's not hurdles, it's more like puzzles, because a hurdle, you know what you have to do, but we still have to figure out exactly what we have to do. Like a it's jigsaw, jigsaw puzzle. puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we need to replace our five-speed axle that's oh, wait. A, is that an axle? <laughs> it used to be an it's axle. It's on those Bluetooth drive shafts so they have a SEMA, I think. It, yeah, it's a Bluetooth drive shaft. It, it lived a very storied and haggard life. Doesn't matter because this was a five-speed axle and we needed six-speed axles. Yes, beefier. with fresh boots and beefier, yes, for more performance. So we need to bolt these in, otherwise the car's not going to move. You think? All right, that's exactly what I think. <laughs> Having trouble there, Tony? Yeah. Uh, is our uh, new subframe a little bit uh, in the way? Well, you know what? Yeah. This is a removable piece on the original suspension, and... Ours is welded? Yeah, ours is welded. Tony, you just need to try harder. Yeah, that was my problem. I wasn't trying hard enough. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> my thumbnail almost came off. No, 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 What's he doing? Uh, He's flexing. Uh, I don't like it. We're hitting the adjuster of the coilover. It's keeping the axle for going in. All right, well, we'll slide that out. I, 
it's still gonna be tight. I still don't know if it's gonna go, but one thing at a time. This is not. I don't think that's gonna fit. It's it's too big to fit in the knuckle. That's like it, it's yeah, it's not clearing here. Uh oh. I mean these are these are bigger. We knew that. That's why we want them because they're stronger. But I didn't think they had a different knuckle on that. I'll be back. He's mad. All right, so the knuckles are different on the Boxster S than they are on the base Boxster. It's good we've got bigger, stronger axles. They're basically, the trans, the axles, all that stuff is off of, it's the same as the 911, essentially, which is really good when you're putting a V8 in, you want all the stronger, bigger stuff, but it's bad right now because we can't get, we, we can't get this thing driving. That means there's another week of waiting for you to drive this freaking thing. Yeah, and that's assuming we get them, you know. <laughs> I really thought I really thought we were gonna get this thing driving, so. Me too. We're not. Hey, we'll get we'll get them next week, champ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>